What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We just got back over here to the shop. We're at Brian's. His car is now on the lift. Mine got pushed out. We got the motor out yesterday. We got to finish taking it apart today. Let me show you a little bit more in depth of what we got going on and what our plan is for mine. Uh, hopefully he'll have a plan for his in a few minutes as well. Just one of those things we got to work on it a little bit. Here we go. Comment, like, and subscribe. Go to turbojohnracing.com to grab yourself some merchandise. Thanks guys. Brian, it's never ending. All the time. Work, work, work. Try to get these things running. So this thing, uh, it popped. We thought it maybe blowed the, the, the electrical tape off the blow-off valve. And it may have just from, it made like 30 pounds of boost. And they said it heard a pop and it kind of, the boost went uh, out of the motor. So, um, you know, it's one of those things we thought it did. And it may have. It feels tight now, but it could have blowed it up kind of like a balloon and vented itself and then kind of tightened itself back up. I would have thought we'd had some distortion. I mean, there's a little bit, but not much. That's some good electrical tape. So he's gonna snatch his out real fast and see, oh, we need to crank it first? Well, I guess, yeah, see what the noise is, see if we can tell where it's coming from. It's kind of cold. It's probably 50 degrees outside. And we just pushed it in like right now. Are you kidding me right now? It just blowed the side of the head off. Are you? It is completely blown apart, Brian. Yeah, it's killed. Broke the head. That's what these PRCs do though. God! It completely trashed the head. And this was a newer casting that was not supposed to do that. It blowed the head gasket out and everything. Oh my God. Well, the good thing is, is it don't feel like it's in the bottom end. Hopefully it didn't mess the block up. You're just gonna snatch the heads off over there. God, that's never ending. I just pulled the heads off of it as long as the block looks good. I mean, I just have to figure out. Are you freaking kidding me right now? God. All right, guys, so here's mine. So once again, last night we got the the caps off of it and we can see, see this thing just spins. And uh, you know, we're, we're, the, the problem, the way the spacer bearing, so the spacer bear, bearing is basically welded to the bearing on the crankshaft. Um, crankshaft could probably be turned on the, the mains. Uh, can't get it off, it's already 30. I mean, this is a nice high dollar crankshaft. I might be able to do something with this crankshaft. Um, send it to shaft tack and get it fixed or something. But what we're worried about, this is the one that was really bad back here, is see how the spacer bearing, it just kind of kind of goes and kind of flops around in there. Um, there's, we don't know if it damaged the block. Uh, I was talking to Danny Perry today and see the tang is still, even the tang is still kind of up there. But um, it just kind of goes, don't really feel anything. The bearing is jacked all up. But I talked to Danny today and he has a customer that has a crank that is a 400 main, 3.75 stroke. Got to get rods anyway. So get a six inch set of rods. I talked to Sam Vincent last night. He's got a set on the shelf, another set of MGPs, which we got two good seasons out of those. So I'm not unhappy about that at all. So we'll get those rods, this crankshaft, have a little bit over 400 cubic inches. Uh, the compression is gonna be kind of high. It's gonna be 12.9 uh, uh, to one, unless put a thicker gasket on it, but it ought to be pretty radical. I found another used camshaft. We'll get that camshaft. It's a 112 lobe separation and it's a little bit smaller. This camshaft actually might would work pretty good in more cubic inches, but it's only got 109 lobe separation. So that's not super, super boost friendly. Uh, we did run 147 mile per hour this weekend. Um, you know, but it's just what I run the other week at Harold's. Uh, but this thing, uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to get it together. 
and no big issues. So what he's gonna have to do is he'll get the caps on this thing and he'll run the, the bore in it and check it, make sure it's good, make sure it's not out of round, maybe throw the line hone in it. If for some reason it is damaged, he said he's got somebody they can weld up the block and then he'll go in a line board and line hone it to get it back ready to go. So uh, I don't know how busy he is in the next couple of weeks. It's damaged, it's hurt. Uh, we'll get it apart and fix it the best we can. Um, and luckily the crankshaft he's got also up there is a big block Chevrolet snout. Um, it's actually the perfect crankshaft for him. The CV Products Exodyne uh, front cam cover and timing chain belt stuff. Uh, all I would have to do if we get a regular snout one is just get a different pulley for the for the crank down there. So not a big deal either way. Okay, let's pull this thing apart real bad and see what the see what the, the block looks like under here. So it looks like right here is the, the middle one and the back one, number four. So number three and number four. Definitely number number four is the worst. So we'll see what it looks like. Uh, all right, let's get it apart. All right, guys. Well, we got the crankshaft out of it. Crankshaft is ruined, like bad. Brantley came over, Harper came over. Crankshaft is in bad shape. Uh, mains are already 30 thousandths, rods are 20. Uh, it might could be repaired. We did kill the thrust bearing out of it as well. Um, I did take, oh yeah, that's one of the, the ones that got merged. Look at that, that's insane. Lots of bad bearings. Uh, the block, I think, is okay, and you can see, you can see where it kind of spun in there, uh, but it is not like destroyed. And these are the ones that it was messed up, and I, I got one of these out of the front, and this one up here in the front, when I was, um, it was snapped in really tight, and I was able to get it in all of these. And so they're pretty firm. So hopefully, maybe he can just touch up, do a like a little light line hone, and maybe it'll be okay. Uh, we blowed air through the end, the way I had this thing plumbed, and you got an in and an out. And so we blowed, first we blowed it in the wrong one, and we both I covered us with oil, didn't I? That's pretty bad. And broke Yeah, so Brad peeing all over us. Um, but then we sprayed it through here, and we definitely had a very good, we had a very good, uh, uh, fancy, a problem. That right there is a hole. Hmm, that's not supposed to be there. I don't know where that goes. It may not go anywhere. I mean, it may not be a problem, but it, it may be. Look at Danny, look at that too. I didn't notice that on any of the other ones. Uh, that's one of the ones, I don't know if that's one of the ones we repaired or if that's one that was repaired previously. Hmm, that might have to get welded up in another sleeve put in it. Wow, it is thin, thin. So I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just an old grain back there. Oh, that, oh, that might not be a problem. Uh, it's just hollow back there. That's uh, all this is. Kind of hollow. Huh, no, well, I don't know. I'll let, uh, I'll let Danny look at it and see. I can see light through it really good though. It goes all the way down. Looks like it'd be like a drain back uh, type scenario. But uh, I hope the lock is in good shape. I'll let him look at that and decide if he wants to weld that up. That one has definitely been repaired at some point. But like I said, this thing had sleeves in it. And the good thing about aluminum is, is you can weld it and then re-machine it. So, um, yeah. All right, guys, well, we'll see. Uh, I'm not a professional engine builder. Uh, I'm an engine assembler. And so we'll let, we'll let a professional engine builder look at it and decide what we need to do. Hopefully that's not an issue. That's the only thing I see back there, though, is that hole. Um, the other block is right there. And so it's basically the exact same. Um, 400 mains. 4.165 bore. Uh, I'm not scared to put that motor back in. So if this one needs work or it's gonna be down for a while, 
I've still got the other camshaft for that one. So we'll put the crankshaft in it, the rods, the other camshaft that was in that motor and we'll rock and roll. But I'm hoping this, we can get this one in it and make it work properly. But when we pressurized it through here, we did have air coming out of the mains here and oil was coming up through them from where it was out of the galley. So it's it is, that one. did it come up? Did it not come up that one? Uh -uh. Hmm. Look at the video. Yeah, we'll, we'll look back, but it should have it come through all of them. Maybe I've got something wrong with the, the way I've got my oil galley plugs. Uh, maybe the restrictors. The, the way I understand it is the oil comes, the way I was playing with it, it comes in there and it pressurizes this galley here. And then this galley feeds all the mains from, it kind of goes over to the side like this, I think it is, and then goes back. And then I've got restrictors here to restrict going to the actual uh, lifters, but we may need to make those bigger or maybe maybe make them smaller on one side. I mean, this this side over here was oiling like crazy, but maybe it's a, a distance, which I've also got the, the Brodix restrictors now, so I'll probably put the Brodix ones in just to uh, make sure that that's good. We also need to make sure that there's no way that these restrictors are interfering with the oil flow coming up here. We're making some progress, we got it apart. We'll take it to the machine shop and let them look at it. Smart car delivery service. There is enough room, barely, but it fits. All right, guys, well, we just dropped the engine off with Mr. Bobby over here. We've been having a good conversation. I about forgot to even record anything. So we he's gonna fix the block for me. He's gotta balance the crankshaft. Uh, I don't, we don't think the block's hurt. You think the block, I mean, we don't know. He's gonna yeah. put it in the machine and line hone it and see if it works out okay. Hopefully it'll be fine. But he can fix it regardless. If it, even if it needs to be line board, they can do that. He also has a, a guy here that's got a crankshaft. That's exactly what we need. So we're gonna grab that crankshaft. So he'll have, uh, he's gonna balance the crankshaft, fix the block, make sure the block's good. And uh, I've got to get rods. So Sam Vincent's got rods, I'm gonna order the rods. So hopefully, hopefully one day next week in the, in the next week or so, we'll have this thing back together again. We also having conversation, talking to people, is huge. Um, we we're just talking about why I might be tearing it up. Uh, I, I think we've come to the conclusion that my traction control may be tearing it up. I'll go into detail with y'all on what we're thinking might be happening with the traction control on another video. All right, guys, I told y'all she got us billet for our anniversary. I wasn't lying. Sam Vince that had some rods in stock. Got these shipped out, ordered them a couple days ago. He got them to me in like a day. Freaking crazy. So you can see what we got, what we're putting in. Bam, MGP rods, billet goodness. Ooh, boy. Wow, look at that. Freaking beautiful. Wow. All right, guys, we're getting parts and pieces. Hopefully we'll be back together soon. And don't forget, if you want to sign Connecting Rod for some of my old stuff, go to our website, turbojohnracing.com. Appreciate it, guys.